What's up YouTube, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. In this video, we'll talk about how to serve an effective float serve. And a lot of your serving fundamentals will come in this video. In general, you always want to start with your feet in a V shape or an L shape, depending on how your body is made. And that means my left foot is facing the net, and my right foot is either facing the sideline or the right pole. And that allows me to open up a little bit to generate power on the ball. Once I get my feet positioned, you see how I'm shifting my weight to my rear hip. And part of your power is going to come from the transfer of the momentum from your right hip to your front hip. Next, you want to have your chest facing 45 degrees relative to the net or 90 degrees depending on what's comfortable for you. But generally, you want to make sure you open up the power and close to your target. Next, I want to present the ball in front of my right shoulder. And that's mistake number one that people make is that they present the ball to the left shoulder and they end up tossing over the left shoulder and they have to reach across and they end up hitting out to the left or having side spin or some effect that they don't want that's air to the left. This is what the serving motion looks like without the ball and I recommend doing this multiple times before you actually include the ball to help build some solid habits before you actually serve. I make a V shape or an L shape with my feet shift my weight back on my right hip if I'm right-handed, present the ball in front of my right hitting shoulder, and then my elbow's back and my hand is big and firm, so I'm ready to serve. The order of the movements is going to be present the ball, toss, step, elbow, freeze. Once again, toss, step, elbow, freeze. Now we'll talk about what to do with your hand when you're serving a float serve. When you're serving a float serve, you want minimal spin. That's why they call it a float serve. It's similar to a knuckleball in baseball. The less spin the ball has, the more it's going to wobble and shift places in the air randomly because the air is being displaced unevenly. If the ball is spinning, it's going to displace air evenly. It's going to have a predictable path. But having no spin on the ball is like having no tread on your tires. It will move wherever in random places. In order to create that effect, you want to make sure that your hand is very firm. If your hand is soft, then it's going to take the shape of the ball, which is good for spiking because you want it to spin. But you want to make sure that I have my wrist straight and my hand as firm as possible so it can create minimal contact. You don't want it to grab the ball because then it will create top spin. You also want to contact the ball at the base of your middle finger where you get your monkey bar blisters. If this is the earth, and this is the equator, you want the base of your middle finger to be contacting the equator. So the sound of your flow surf should sound more like a thud than a slap. Now that we've talked about our contact point, I'm going to talk about tossing. Tossing is the most underrated aspect of serving. Most people think about what to do with their hand or their power or their speed. But if you don't have a good toss, you will have a terrible serve. If you have a good toss and a weak arm, you'll still get a very consistent serve over and very effective. When you toss the ball, you want to make sure that we talked about presenting the ball in front of your right shoulder. So when I lower the ball to lift it, I'm going to have it a few feet or a few inches higher than my highest contact point. The lower the toss, the easier it is to contact the ball. When I'm tossing the ball, you want to make sure that you toss it where it lands to the right of your left foot. Because when I step through, it's going to be right over my hitting shoulder. This is why it's important to practice tossing because if I'm tossing and it's landing in front of my left foot, I know that my serve is going to go to my left and out. So fix that problem not with your arm swing, but fix it with your toss. Present the ball with my right hitting shoulder. If I do this correctly, it should land to the right of my left foot. Notice that when I'm tossing, my arm is loaded to hit. You don't want to do anything fancy. You want to have minimal motion to make sure you have an accurate swing. Also, when I'm tossing, I'm pointing with my palm upward. If I flick my fingers, it's going to have spin and it's not going to float as much. Or if my hand is not firm, it's not going to have a lot of power. So you want to make sure when you toss, you have your palm upward because you're just going to toss it straight up and down. You don't want to toss it too far forward, too far back, and so on. So 
consistent toss will produce a consistent serve. This is what it looks like when you put it all together. Remember that power comes from several places. It comes from the body transfer momentum from my right hip to my left. It comes from the rotation of my body. And it also comes from the speed of my arm. The reason why you want to freeze when you're serving is it helps with accuracy. And if I freeze to my target, the ball will probably go there. Now you'll see what it looks like from behind and why it's so important to toss over your right shoulder when you're doing your float surf. If I toss in front of my left shoulder, this is what it looks like. Do you see how I had to reach over my left shoulder in order for me to contact it and it forced me to hit in another direction. Also observe that I'm freezing to my target and I'm also hitting through the ball so the ball can be as flat as possible. The part of the antenna that I just touched is what I call a second red or third white. And that's where you should be aiming to make your serve as flat as possible. In summary, to have an effective standing float serve, you want to make sure that your feet are set up in the right position, left foot facing the net, right foot facing the sideline or the right pole, to make a V shape or an L shape. And that allows me to open up for power and also to put my weight on my rear hip to also shift my momentum for more power. Then I present the ball over my right hitting shoulder with my elbow back ready to serve. And the four step process is toss, step, elbow, freeze. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any other video suggestions regarding volleyball, athletic training, or fitness, please leave your video suggestions in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.